Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today I want to talk to you about the best insulation methods for your crawl space. Now for years I've been telling everybody that whenever you seal the crawl space it's better to insulate the walls whenever the crawl space is not sealed or it's vented, which is typically how most crawl spaces are built today. It's best to insulate the subfloor, but I want to share with you some science that was done back between 2003 and 2004, and the study was published in 2005, that actually breaks down some great information about energy efficiency in crawl spaces based in a study that was done in North Carolina. Stay tuned. If you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, energy efficiency, air quality. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell, make sure you check out our DIY store and our franchise opportunities. As I mentioned, this research was done by the North Carolina Advanced Energy Corporation. I actually reached out to them to try to get them to be a guest on our YouTube channel and they declined because they uh, wanted to be neutral in the information, but they did uh, indicate that I could share that information with our viewers. So I wanted to bring this to your attention. Research was over a two year period from the best I could tell, it was between 2003, 2004, and then the published uh, study was done in June 22nd of 05. It was actually sponsored by the US Department of Energy. And I'm gonna put a link, a direct link to the, uh, to the webpage so you can check it out. Uh, for yourself and read all the way through it. It's it's a lot of pages. Like the, the main part I'm going to be talking about is on page 60 um, coming up. So what was the study designed for? This study compared the performance of, crawl, of closed crawl spaces, which had sealed foundation wall vents, sealed polyethylene film liner, and various insulation and drying strategies to traditional wall vented crawl spaces with perimeter wall vents and polyethylene film covering 100% of the ground surfaces. So basically what they're saying is they're comparing an open vented crawl space to a sealed crawl space with different types of uh, insulation to see which one performed better over a two year period. Some of the materials they used was a class one vapor retarder. I did not see uh, where they indicated how thick the liner was. It was probably at least a six mil. Um, and in the closed crawl spaces, it did mention that the liners were sealed, okay? Now keep in mind that a vented crawl space does not require you to seal the liner to itself. It could be just loose laid vapor barrier while a closed crawl space does require the liner to be sealed in most building code applications. Um, the subfloor insulation in both sealed and non-sealed crawl space groups were R19 subfloor insulation. Again, I don't think they said what kind, probably fiberglass. Uh, and they did use an R13 two inch foam wall insulation. Today, the standard is an R10 uh, in most cases. It's very difficult to find an R13, uh, but it was a two inch foam. Our foam that we use is a two inch. It's actually two and a quarter inch because of how they manufacture it. And it's a R10 foam uh, R value. So anyway, just wanted to share that information up front. So what was studied? The study was conducted at 12 owner occupied homes, all electric, single family detached houses with the same floor plan located on one cul-de-sac in the Southeast United States. And I do know that it was done in North Carolina, not sure exactly what area of North Carolina. As I mentioned, if you want to read the information for yourself on that link below, it's on page 60, section 6.2. Uh, they studied the electrical energy consumption data. Now, this is an interesting quote. Uh, we had been advised when we were beginning this study that we should not expect to measure any space conditioning energy savings during the summer season. So I don't know who advised them of that, but they weren't uh, too keen on or didn't feel like they were going to see a whole lot of energy savings in the summer. However, when we analyzed the utility billing records, we realized that there could be notable energy savings. So they wanted to uh, test the energy savings or potential energy savings in the summer, but I guess they were advised to only focus on the winter. Okay, so they decided to focus on both, which I'm glad they did because it shows some very interesting data. So as we can see on figure 19, this just so you know, there were three study groups and this was one house in each of the study groups. Okay, so as you can see, 
they focused on a vented crawl space with R19 subfloor insulation in this study group, closed crawl space with a sealed liner and R19 subfloor insulation in this group, and then a closed crawl space with a sealed liner and two inch foam insulation in this group. Now, this is very, very interesting. All right, so look at some of these uh, some of these uh, charts. So the vented crawl space is this one right here uh, with, with the dots. The, the sealed, the closed crawl space is here and then uh, with the uh, subfloor and then the closed crawl space with the wall insulation is here. So the dark one is the wall insulation, the white one is the subfloor insulation and these two are sealed. So in June uh, of 03, the most energy uh, let's just look at the vented first. The energy was always used more in a vented crawl space. Now, take keep in mind that in North Carolina, just like in Tennessee, September and October tend to be non-heating, non-cooling months, okay? So depending on how mild uh, the September and even the October was, uh, they could have not used much electricity to heat and cool the home. So that's why you're probably seeing uh, pretty similar uh, across the board here. And then when we get into November, typically it starts to get a little cooler. And then obviously in January is when they use the most energy to heat uh, the home. But uh, even over here in April, again, that tends to be one of those months that not a lot of energy consumption to heat and cool the house. And sometimes March, we get like more snow in March in, in Tennessee and Knoxville particularly than we do in January and February. So it's really weird climate here. When I first looked at this chart, I was a little shocked at, at what I saw here because I had been telling you from the beginning uh, when we started our YouTube channel that wall insulation across the board is the best way to insulate a sealed crawl space. But this data is very interesting and I'm going to share Stick with me because I'm going to share with you some more information later after I show you this chart. But look, look at right here. Again, this shows energy consumption. So obviously, in the summer months, energy consumption with subfloor insulation was much higher than wall insulation. Okay, as you can see here, 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 and even in those, those cooler climate months, wall insulation outperformed subfloor insulation in both sealed and non-sealed crawl spaces. But look at what happens whenever we switch over to winter and we get into those colder months. Wall insulation actually underperforms uh, versus subfloor insulation, even in a sealed crawl space. So here you've got wall insulation using even more energy than open vented subfloor insulation, which I find very interesting. Again, here, wall insulation is not performing as well as the subfloor insulation in December. And then in January, that's when that cold spike hits. I assume we're getting in really cold temperatures because as you can see that outside, what, what's, what's showing here is that outside cold air is rushing into the crawl space most likely and causing that subfloor insulation to not be that energy efficient in the vented crawl space. But in the, in the sealed or non-vented crawl space, that subfloor insulation again is outperforming the wall insulation. And then again in February, and then in March, it, it, it starts to, to trickle down a little bit. And, uh, but even March, subfloor insulation is outperforming wall insulation. And then in April, the wall insulation starts to outperform the subfloor insulation. So very, very interesting data that I'm looking at here. And it, it, it's making me rethink a lot of things about that. But then I read the rest of it. Okay, so let's look at what they said, it, it, because slides can be great, but look at what they said in their data. All right, so for a sealed crawl space with subfloor insulation, for the 12 months analyzed, the floor insulated closed crawl space houses used an average of 15% less energy for space conditioning than the control houses, which represented a savings of approximately $87, 870 kilowatt hours per year for each household. So the, the cooling season 
of the sealed crawl space with floor insulation saved 21%. The heating season saved around 11%. Okay, so that's some pretty good information there. All right, but look, look, at, look at this next slide. In the sealed with wall insulation, the wall insulation closed and sealed an average and had a savings of around 18% less energy than the controlled houses over the same 12 uh, month period, which represents a savings of approximately 1,025 kilowatt hours or $103 per year. So even though in that chart, it showed that you know the subfloor insulation in the winter was outperforming the wall insulation, the average savings across the year, the wall insulation still saved more than the subfloor insulation. Okay, so that's very interesting. There was an average savings of only 2% heating savings in the winter with the wall insulation versus an 11% uh, savings with the subfloor insulation, but a 21% savings with subfloor insulation in the summer versus a 36% savings in the winter. So look at this next slide. This is also posted uh, by Advanced Energy uh, for their savings. So right here, we've got the closed uh, sealed crawl space with R19 and the, the sealed crawl space uh, with wall insulation R13. Look right here in the winter, December into February, they actually saw a, a uh, negative result with wall insulation. It, it actually was colder, or this house performed worse than the previous year uh, when it was sealed up, the best I could tell. There's a 14 point difference here between subfloor insulation and wall insulation, but all of the rest of the seasons, the wall insulation outperformed the cold weather uh, versus subfloor insulation. So on average, you still saw a better savings with wall insulation versus subfloor insulation in a sealed crawl space. So this is what I concluded from this study. Again, North Carolina is a fairly mild climate. It does get cold there, but nothing like Minnesota or up in you know New England or in the Midwest or different places like that. So my conclusion is that homes built in warmer clients fare better when the crawl space is sealed with wall insulation, but performs worse in winter months with that same setup versus homes built in colder climates may fare better with subfloor insulation, not wall insulation, whenever the crawl space is sealed, but will perform worse in summer months, okay? So there is a chance that you might wanna do both options. If you're in the Midwest, for example, and you've got extreme hot summers and extreme cold winters, you may be better off doing both subfloor insulation and wall insulation, where us in the South, where we have mild winters and really hot summers, we're gonna see a better across the board average savings just using the wall insulation. So before you consider you know, installing either wall insulation and subfloor insulation, I want you to think about the return on your investment, okay? Because keep in mind that the, the savings difference was around, it was $103 versus $87. So, you know, that's what? Uh, 16 17 dollars a year in savings between wall insulation versus subfloor insulation but if like I said if you're in one of those really cold winter month uh, winter climates uh, consider the return on your investment if you decide to do both because if you've got a 2,000 square foot home and you put subfloor insulation in 2,000 square feet that's a that's a lot of material that's that's a pretty big uh, cost in order to insulate 2,000 square feet of a house to save, you know, maybe an additional $15 a year, right? Versus wall insulation, that same 2,000 square foot home, if it's got three foot tall foundation walls, it's only 700, 750 square feet of wall insulation. So, you know, you're going to spend less money with that wall insulation install, labor, materials, possibly versus a 2,000 square foot uh, subfloor insulation. Plus, 
Keep in mind if that subfloor insulation ever gets wet, there's a leak, it's gonna hide leaks, different things like that. So even after going through this study, I'm still convinced that wall insulation is the best method, even possibly in a very cold climate. Uh, but if it was my personal house, I might decide to do both, wall insulation and subfloor insulation if I lived in Minnesota or Wisconsin or something like that where I had extreme cold weather, all right? And the other thing too, the building practices up in the Midwest, they, their walls are actually thicker. So in North Carolina, you know, we have four inch block wall thickness, right? Typically it's about four inches where, you know, from what I understand, talking to Brian and some of those guys live in Minnesota, they got six inch block walls. So adding R10 on a six inch wall is going to be more energy efficient than adding R10 on a four inch wall. So anyway, there's just some of my thoughts there that obviously the least energy efficient of all of them across the board is going to be the, the open crawl space. Uh, even with subfloor insulation, you're still going to burn a lot of energy uh, trying to uh, maintain heating and cooling in that house. So I, I hope this was good for you. I'm going to try to dive into this, uh, this advanced energy um, uh, study and pull out some more data and, and focus on some more topics. I really wish they would have come on our channel um, and, and they could have explained this a lot better. But hopefully this was good. Put a like down below if you like this information. I'm Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day and we'll see you later.